tired of being sick and tired. Someone invited me to come to a healing retreat for three days, and I went on this retreat and it changed my life. I came into the retreat unaware of natural healing, and natural healing could actually change all of my conditions, to, and from sickness to wellness. And so I remember coming off a bus, and there was trees and grass and everything that was natural, and that hay fever, the asthma, the eczema, everything kicked in. And I went into the kitchen or the laboratory when we were putting our bags down, and I said, what am I going to do? I'm in a crisis. I don't have my medication for my asthma. I don't have my cream for my eczema. But I heard the voice give me guidance for the first time. I heard that voice clearly say, my first formula, eat grapefruits, lemons, and oranges. And I did. And from that day, I drink plenty of water. And I re remember hearing a particular healer, Dr. John E. Moore, who's now an ancestor. He's a master herbalist for over 50 years. He would talk about the power of the plants and that if we knew how to use plant life, that we could heal ourselves from any condition. And so that evening, I sat in front of a fireplace, and that was my first sweat lodge. I wasn't aware that I was in a sweat lodge. But instead of laying down, if you're an asthmatic, you lay down, your lungs get to shut down. And so I sat up for the night. And that morning, I went through a detox. I didn't even know I was going through a detox. But mucus came out of my nose, my mouth, my eyes for about an hour. And as it come, began to flush out, the asthma, the breathing, my lungs came back without drugs. And the skin stopped itching. And my eyes that were bloodshot and itching, they stopped. And my mind that was in a state of stress during that time, it just stopped. It was just like after a hurricane, after a storm, and the calmness that settled into my life. And then I remember all of a sudden I started hearing the workshops, fasting, colon health, natural living, herbology, Buddhist medicine. And in the midst of that, I picked up a book that put me on my path. And that was Dick Gregory, Cooking with Mother Nature. And I didn't know Dick Gregory personally, but I used his book, and I connected to his family, and I began to take my walk for wellness. And when I went back home from that three-day retreat, I changed my entire food intake, because I was on, living on junk food, processed food, microwave, fast food, and I shifted. I became a vegetarian. I started taking greens. I started taking the plants, the herbs. I started to clean out my inner cold, my colon. And I was a dancer, I was a singer, and that was what I, that was the direction I was on. But when I got connected to the healing, my whole soul went into this healing. People started to come to my home and visit me. And when they started to visit me, they would all get well. And they would start getting well in three days just because they were eating what was in my kitchen, my healing laboratory, my pharmacy. And so over time, I opened up, I became certified as a colon therapist, holistic practitioner, a lay midwife a yoga teacher, and then what happened? I opened up a wellness center. The name of the center was, what happened to me, heal thyself. It took me two 21-day cycles to completely get rid of all the disease I just mentioned. I had to go through cleansing, I had to go through a lifestyle change. When I opened up the center, years came and gone, people came for, for treatment, they came for colostomy, they came for workshops, fasting, information, consultation, food preparation. I started with the, my first book, which, which is Heal Thyself, was for health and longevity, and that was written approximately 21 years ago. And then, in 2000, Sacred Woman, a guide for healing the feminine body, mind, and spirit, that came out, and I was invited to come to London a year later, and that was so profound that I always wanted to come back and visit you again. 
And so it did happen when I came with my, nut, my third book, which is The City of Wellness, Restoring Your Health Through the Seven Kitchens of Consciousness, based on the chakra system, which is ancient African concept, which are called the Aris, bringing light to the body, using food as medicine. Food as medicine is my specialty. And I consider myself a holistic surgeon, that no matter what your health condition is, I can tell you with food, juice, herbs, bad prayers to take in order to overcome and flush out and begin to walk a holistic natural life. And so now, in the fourth book, yeah, I'm just as surprised and shocked of the title as you are. Because this was a migration, this book. That I, I really started focusing on this book nine years ago. And these are stories about what women are going through. And I had answers because the purpose of this book, Overcoming an Angry Vagina. You know what the purpose of the book is? To get onto a journey of womb wellness. And why the book was written primarily, and I dedicate to those women who have been bleeding every month, seven days, nine days, two or three weeks, literally hemorrhaging and, and being told that that was normal. Cramping, numbing their body with medication, in the bed, balled up, throwing up, nauseous, and I'm saying it is not necessary. We can overcome that. And then it's dedicated to women who have fibroid tumors, and the tumors are removed. And then they come back a year or two years later, years later because women did not change their lifestyle. They didn't know how to change. They didn't know what to change. They didn't know what's possible to heal. And then, again, it was second time. The two months to be moving would grow back. And by the time it was natural, now you're aging. Your, your body's getting older, and all this is happening. By the third time that the tumor grows back, then it's recommended you go ahead and get a hysterectomy, which is then so unnecessary. So women come to me on, at the 11th hour. I say, how much time do you have? They said, I have 30 days, I have 60 days before I have to get the surgery. I said, well, let's go to work. Let's do the baths. Let's do the ginger. Let's do the cast oil packs. Come off of that flesh. Leave the dairy. Leave the fast foods alone. Open up your heart. Start to forgive those past relationships. Because what I've gathered is that when we're sick, it's never just the physical body alone. The physical body is the end result of the emotional body. The, the physical by the end result of a psychological state that we're in. And when we are in a, a low state, we are traumatized. And whenever we're traumatized, and something really hits you deep, where does your hand go in your body? When something really hits you, hits you where you get to the floor. We always say like, oh my goodness. How could that happen to me? And that's what we press. And that's our seat of creation. <coughs> our seat of creativity and things are stifled and what we birth no longer is joy but we birth pain and so I've gathered through um, the, the process and reflecting on my own life, my own wound issues, my own stories that I had to overcome um, that's what makes me say I don't want this to happen to anybody else if I can help it and when you heal as a woman then your family begins, gets a chance to heal the woman is a very center place she's the centerpiece of the house and she is the primary healer of the home. So the guidance means that we're dealing with the five elements, air, fire, water, earth. What you can do even tonight to begin to change your life is to bathe yourself in water. Go home and take a bath of hot water. Put Dead Sea salt into the tub. Put Epsom salt in the tub or put your lavender, put your frankincense and myrrh. Put your stones around the tub. Put in your prayers, emerge into the water, and let go of whatever's in your heart that's blocking you. Let go of whatever rage and anger or disappointment, and you will come out through the water. As you start to cleanse, come off of the flesh. That's why we keep growing the tumors over and over again. The flesh, the dairy, the fast, the fried food. Change your intake. Eat from the garden, eat from the, the fields. Take in from the earth element, the greens. 60% of our intake at least should be based on chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a sun. The sun goes into the plant through photosynthesis. If we take in the plants, we take in the nourishment of the sun. So we're actually eating and drinking sunlight. And when you eat and drink sunlight, you begin to vibrate at a higher rate, a higher level. And that sunlight food can boost your immune system if you have STDs. That sunlight taking in can boost your immune system so that you will not grow another tumor. 
that sunlight will boost your immune system, that your heart will be more forgiving. That sunlight will build you up so that you don't lose your child fourth term of carrying the baby. It would help to prevent, I call it um, menopausal madness. Right? And whatever state we go through as a woman, as women, through that process, our men are going to feel it. Now, we're having two diff different reactions about this word. The men are saying, go ahead, Queen, go ahead, tell the sisters. And the sisters said, well, what about the angry penis? <laughs> so, <laughs> the experiencing or the journey. <laughs> we kind of like mad at each other, and I'm kind of in the middle, like, say, okay. Um, so we, but it's reflected. We have we have work to do, so we don't blame. Like we on this one, when our walk of wellness, we don't blame. We learn because you know, in your relationships, you may start off really with one mate, and then you have you have there's a breakdown, of communication, a relationship, and then you get angry and you leave the relationship, and then you go to another relationship without even having a chance to reflect, purge, change, release, and you get the same relationship in a different outfit in a different states, different words, but it's the same relationship. Why? Because we didn't make the shift. We didn't make the change. Then by the time you get to the third relationship, because that didn't work out because it was like the first relationship, by that time you get an attitude now. Now you're mad. <laughs> and now you start saying things like, all men are the same. No, you are the same. And when we shift, then our reality begins to shift. But then we cannot be desperate women. If you start desperate women, get desperate situations. You say, I just want somebody just to hold. I mean, you don't want just somebody. You want your divineness to hold and embrace you. But that takes time to raise yourself as a woman because what happens, you only have to reflect on what will happen with your father and your mother. A lot of women are angry at their mothers. A lot of women are angry at their fathers. And so we go out looking for our father, but we're angry at our father. We're talking as our mother, but our mother's angry and she passed it on. And then we're carrying our babies in our wounds. And so I say, also to the men, I dedicate overcoming angry vagina to men who love their mates, and she has an angry vagina. I dedicate this to the unborn babies who are in the mother's womb, who will travel through an angry vagina and inherit an angry vagina attitude. And so we have healing to do because that's what we, we work, we're the portal gate of the world. Nobody can get in but through us. That's the only way this world becomes what it is. So that means that we have a big responsibility. So as we elevate ourselves as women in body, in mind, in spirit, in word, in deed, in action, and that takes time. I, that's what I'm putting forth seed. You say, well, I, I just need a man. No. Take that time now to raise yourself up. And so even if a man comes into your life, you'll be more prepared. Because what happens is we have not had our rights of passage, so we don't really know how to be women or men. We don't know how to treat each other. And so until we learn and relearn and purge and cleanse and heal and begin to seek our ways of our ancestors, then we're going to continue to suffer. So the first gate, the first uh, portal is about guidance, using the elements to heal the body. Releasing, washing, bathing, recharging. I lay out how you are to live from the morning, what you're to do in the midday to heal yourself and restore your womb, and what you're to do in the evening. Because we're having, we are, of all the women in the whole world, the African woman suffers more more tragedy and drama than anyone else. So we have, we the mothers of this earth, it's time for us to get our just due. It's time for us to get our wellness. And then we move into the second portal. The second portal means a circle. We're forming a circle of wellness, a, a womb circle, where women come together and share what's in their heart, what they're going through. Now, know about the statement, whatever's, whatever's in the circle stays what? In the circle. Because if you say, oh, girl, did you hear about her womb story? <laughs> you can't go out and start talking about someone's womb story. You just have to say, send her love and blessings because your story was in, the, in that circle. And you want someone to honor your story and to appreciate your story because a lot of, as women get older, they don't ever have a chance to talk about what happened. And that's why they begin to cry and release and, and let go. Inside that circle, you're going to hear a voice. And it's called voice of the womb. The voice of the womb will give you your healing formula and tell you exactly what's going on with your womb, why you keep attracting the same type of relationships, what this bleeding is all about, why did you have, why did you lose three or four babies, what changes need to be made. And we might call that intuition. The whole body does speak. 
You can go to the heart and the heart will speak to you. You can go to your skin and your skin will speak to you. You can go to your womb and say, what is my womb issue? What am I to do? And how am I to change my reality? How can I revert myself out of this condition to a higher condition? I am sick and tired of being sick and tired and I want to change. And so you go in and you ask. So I will talk to something very brief. And just close your eyes for just a minute. Just a moment of breathing. Breathing in, deep, and breathing out. Let it go. Let the tension, let the stress, let the anxiety go. Let it all go. Let it melt away. And I want you to say this. Place your hand, rub your hands together. Eyes are closed. And place them over your forehead. Go palm. And say, I bless, I bless the womb of my mind for what I think I create. I create. Rub your hands together again. And bless, place them over your heart. And say, I bless, I bless the womb of my heart. The womb of my heart. For what I feel. For what I feel. I create. I create. I birth. I birth. Rub your hands together, create that fire. This is a laser surgery. Nature's taking care. Place your hand over your reproductive center, your creative center, your creation seat of power both women and men, and you say, I bless, I bless the seat, the seat of, creation. of creation for what I think, for what I think. and what I feel, and what I, I, feel. I birth. I birth. Today, today, I birth my higher self. I birth my higher self. Today, today, I am reborn. I am reborn. I take my journey, I take my journey into wellness. Into wellness. Breathe in deep. And out again. And I just want one or two sisters who actually are connected already. You probably already heard your voice already. Of, through bleeding, clotting, PMS, pain, endometriosis. All of these are signs that the womb is talking to you. She is telling you a story. So listen to her. If you had STDs and you took medication and now it's gone and it came back again, there is a story. There is a message. If, every, if your womb is prolapsed as you have gotten older, then there is a message, why is your womb prolapsed and it's coming out of you vaginally. If you have, you keep attracting relationships that are abusive to you and beat your womb up, there's something going on inside of your soul that needs to shift and change. So you ask yourself right now, <coughs> my womb speaks, connect to her. And what does she say in a word? Someone speak out. What, what's that? Love? Learn. What? Breathe in deep, sister. What does your womb want you to learn? Now speak. Breathe in again. Everyone breathe in together. One breath. What does your womb want you to learn? Whatever comes to you, just say what comes to you from your heart. Love. She wants, your womb wants you to learn how to love. What does your womb want you to learn? How to take care of her. So that is why she is here tonight. Will you listen when you learn? Will you protect her once you learn what to do to protect and heal her? Then tell your womb thank you. Thank you for telling me. For, for connecting. And she says thank you for listening. Another sister. Your womb speaking to you, what does she say? Get rid of the pain. And how do you get rid of the pain? Inhale deep and speak. How do you get rid of the pain? Heal myself. Mm. When do you begin to heal yourself? Inhale deep. Exhale. When do you begin to heal yourself? Today. And what stopped you from healing yourself previously? Inhale deep. What stopped you previously? Exhale and speak. Ignorance. What is that? Ignorance. Will you listen to your womb and heal thyself? Yes. Will you nurture her and love her to wellness? Yes. Will you take the time that is needed to heal yourself? No. Will you allow your womb to rest so that she can be rejuvenated? Yes. yes. And you will keep in connection another sister or a brother. Inhale deep. And speak what's in your heart. Cleanse. Cleanse. Your womb tells you to cleanse. How does she want you to cleanse? Inhale deep. And exhale. Now.
learn. We're here to learn how to pray. Inhale deep and thank you, womb. Bless your womb. And in our circle, we begin to have communication. We become our own womb healers, our own womb practitioners. So when we bleed and clot, and when we go into contractions and we're in pain, then we realize what to do through our healing and our cleansing. We can prevent so much of the womb trauma, disasters, and dramas. And we begin to birth on a higher level. Thank you, womb. Say thank you. And so we do one hesi, which is a chant of womb. And the ancient word, another word for womb is shishet, or vagina is shishet. And that's the ancient comedic word for the womb. Inhale, womb. Exhale, release the tone. Bless your womb now, she shed base the vibration up so you birth the highest frequency of human being, of thought, of relationships. From your womb, the world begins anew. Inhale, she shed. She shed. Find your harmony, find your note, because we're all different, but we're all in the same pair. Inhale. Blessings to you. Inhale, deep. And exhale. And so it said in some books of spirit that women are cursed. So it's time to rewrite the script. Because if you believe that you're a cursed woman, then it's justified that you would bleed every month and be in pain because you're cursed. When you're cursed, you have to have pain. But when you heal yourself as a woman, you have no more pain. You have your menstrual flow, and it is actually a friend. They call it a friend, but you have, you have, now you're in the bed, and you're in pain, and you're cramping. That's not a good friend. And then... When we have our children, some of us go through 24 hours, 36 hours of bringing life into the world of excruciating pain. It's not necessary. Maybe if you heal your womb, you'll have four hours or maybe eight hours of birthing and you're able to squat and bear down and bring that life through holistically, naturally, even a home birth. And so we're not going to say any more that I mean, receive it in our psyche that we're cursed with. We're going to say, I am not, four times I am not. I'm not a cursed woman. A cursed woman. I'm a blessed woman. I'm a blessed woman. I am not. I am not a cursed woman. A cursed woman. I am a blessed woman. I am a blessed woman. I am not. I am not a cursed woman. A cursed woman. I am a blessed woman. I am a blessed woman. Do you know how revolutionary that is? In every spiritual house, you will say, "No, I am not a cursed woman." I am a blessed woman, and blessed women attract blessings. Blessed women give blessings. We need to be blessed, and we can bless ourselves by how we live our lives, from the thoughts that we think, the feelings that we have, the actions that we take. It will all be a blessing to ourselves. Therefore, all our relations will be healed because of the blessings that we carry as women. Because when you carry the anger, and the rage in your heart, it will follow you. So tonight we let that go. And we begin to see that we are truly blessed. And we begin to vibrate on a higher frequency. And so that takes us into the portal of the rebirth. As you go through one portal to the next, you begin to wake up. It's like you stretch and say, oh, good morning. You know when the weather, the weather gets warm? So, oh, it feels good to wake up this morning. It feels like a rebirth. I felt like that this morning. Oh, I felt so good here today because the sun is shining, but it's really shining inside your heart. And so that's your rebirth. And you got to claim your rebirth. You can't wait for anybody to help you get a rebirth. You have to claim your own rebirth. Say, today, I rebirth myself. And there's an ancient prayer um, that says, Ishe Oluwa. Kole Baje, or I'm going to say Ishe. Ishe. Oluwa. Oluwa. Kole Ba. Kole Ba. Jeo. Jeo. Ishe Oluwa. Kole Ba Jeo. Ishe Oluwa. Kole Ba Jeo. You know what it's saying? God's work. Oluwa's in my raised 
work, Jah's work, Enter's work is indestructible. So no one can destroy your heart again. No one, no matter what has happened to you, if it was incest or rape, you're not allowing anything else to take away your joy and your peace and your ability to recreate yourself and rebirth yourself into this new woman who is a blessed woman because she says it so, so it is so. And our angels gave us this prayer thousands of years ago on the temple walls, and so I know who we are. We're healers. And this is the secrets of the women. Repeat after me. I am the woman. I am the woman who lightens the darkness. I have come. I have come to lighten the darkness. To lighten the darkness. It is lightened. It is lightened. I am there. I am there for those who weep. For those who, who hide their faces, who hide their faces, who sunk down, who sunk down. They looked upon me then. They looked upon me then. I am a woman. I am a woman. Can you feel that? What does that say? That do you? That's who you are. That you are a healer. Women are healers. So assume your position. Assume your post. But in order to fully be that healer, what do you have to do? And you have to do it every day. You have to wake up another day of more healing. And the days will go, come and go, and you're building up, investing in your healing every day. And you are starting to be in the likeness and image of the Most High. Light, beauty, grace, peace, happiness. And you are changing your shy, your karma. It could, you could have been born into chaos and madness. I think we've all been born in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't overcome the chaos and madness. And you can create a whole new dynasty of wellness. So yes, we had chaos, but are we ready to break the cycle of disease and families that are not functioning well? Well, you know, the fact that we are actually in this space right now, this cultural center of knowledge, high knowledge, that after coming through 400 years of chattel slavery, and we've been in a room like this in the dark for three or four months, so food thrown in, we have babies, we have our menstrual flow, we have, we're not even speaking the same language, and we're there, and then all of a sudden we're carted out after three or four months and dropped into a ship, don't know where we're going, have not seen our mother or father, there's no way coming back, the place of no return is that we go. So for us to be able to be here now, when I went to Ghana, and I thought I said, I, I went by myself because I actually was invited to come well, to start a wellness center there. And so, in, when I went into the slave castle, I said, what a mighty people. I really didn't cry. I just said, hmm, because my father's a garbage guy, so he gave me a lot of training in the kitchen. And he, I looked in that space and I said, what a mighty people we are to have survived that at all. Because for eight generations of chattel slavery, you wake up into it all through your life, and when your body leaves, you pass, it's passed on to the children, and it's a, again, and another generation, and another generation, for us to be in our right mind even a little bit. We're blessed. We're blessed. So let's move in that spirit that we are blessed, and we're not taking no for an answer. We're not letting our lower self pull us back into that nightmare of sickness. And see, our mothers need us to get free. Because sometimes the daughters have to be the living example for their mothers to resurrect. You can't say, well, why come my mother? No, why not you? And if you can come up, then your children will have a living example. They will be safe because you'll be able to see and discern and put a light of protection around them so harm will not come, even if they're not in your atmosphere. You'll be able to put a light around them and they will be empowered because of your power. But if we think we're weak women, we think that we have no power, that's when we lose ourselves. This melanin is a gift. We must use it and we must protect it. Because with melanin, you have super consciousness. With the melanin, you can see beyond the flesh. With the melanin, you can think of thought and create it. That's the power of what we were given as a gift. So we have to come out of the bondage and rebirth ourselves. And so part of rebirthing yourself, that's the fourth portal. That rebirthing yourself actually is you coming into your purpose. That becomes the, 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 the gold nugget, the power emerald green, the charge of life. And you can say, I'm living my purpose here on earth. Now, in the beginning, you may not get paid for your purpose. It may take a while. But you have to keep growing them. You, you have to work your purpose until you leave this earth. Never give up and abort your purpose. Never give up and allow your purpose to have crib death. 
Do not give up and have your purpose have a hysterectomy. You just gut it out and say it's impossible. Or you birth it and then you say, well, people are not receiving it right now, so then it dies and that's the crib death. So you have to feed, it's like a baby. If a baby is in a crib and you don't nurse the baby, you don't hold the baby, you barely change the diaper, <coughs> what happens to the baby? Die. Die. That's our purpose. We just look and say, let's, I just gotta make enough money to pay my mortgage, to pay the rent, to, you know. I don't have time to actually walk my journey and to be who I am. We need your purpose. Because when you have your purpose, we're on purpose, and we have someone to go. And you, so do not give up on your, your vision and your purpose was given to you as a gift from the beginning of your life. And that moves us then. So no, it's indestructible. It gets us into the fifth portal. And the fifth portal is after you wake up as a woman and see that you're blessed and you're living blessing and you have healed your womb of all the conflict and craziness that has happened to you in your life, then it's time for a celebration. See, I've gone through enough wound trauma issues and everything, so I really know what you're going through. Everything you've gone through, I've gone through it too. But, but what does our sister say? Let's begin to live our life like it's golden. <coughs> okay, start to live your life on a higher frequency. And so, in the celebration, I have 108 poses. I'll be doing the 108 poses tomorrow at the burning... Burning Thank you. <laughs> and... You know, say I'm doing a one woman show, it's like kind of blew my mind. I'm doing a one I'm not doing a one woman lecture. <laughs> you do that. But um, I, as I said, I started off as an artist. And life goes full circle. That was a teenager. And so now, after the fourth, four is my number. Four is what I, I build on four. So it would make sense that the art now would come into the fullness of that. So I will be doing the 108 poses tomorrow. And guess how many minutes that takes? Eight minutes. And while I'm doing those eight poses, 108 poses, you are breathing for eight minutes. Some of you will feel like you want to pass out because you haven't had that much oxygen in your lungs. But what happens with that much breath, you elevate out of your inner pain, out of your stress. Now, each pose, one brother asked me, he said, are these glyphs of the temple walls? I said, yes, they are. For those who have eyes, they can see. These are glyphs from Newt, the universal mother. When you do that, you feel her affirmation. I am that I am a shining bee dwelling in light to the great mother Oz, who sat on her seat of power in a squat, and she looked out and she said, so this is my medicine on the walls. To Meshkinet, who squats, and she births herself, herself, her new self. So all of the poses are is a state of consciousness. To Sekhmet, who burns up the disease and the sickness, and is fired up and charged enough to be this warrior queen, and not, stay, not standing for her sick state, but making sure that she stays strong. So all of those poses, 108, have a purpose. They have a meaning. What time is that? That will be tomorrow at 7.30. Yes, so please come out and see your own divinity. See yourself, I will be dancing for you. My center is in the hood. This is, I feel quite at home. This is 106 Kingston Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody comes into my center and I said, what's up, what's happening? It's all about the healing, let's bring it on. And if somebody comes not well, I, somebody can take them out, I take them out, whatever the case may be. So this is not something new to me. We, that's why I do this work. That's why I don't, I'm not tired. I'm no ways tired, seven days a week, 24 7 because that's how much healing that we need and so we are some of us are walking around and we feel like we're in Bellevue right now we're so stressed out and all of that but that's why we have to birth a new people new human beings new children they have to come out like this with light and when they come out then we have to have enough force field to keep them on a high frequency so they do not because I had a group of sisters who took sacred women I said don't write your name just right what happened. Out of the 50, 60 women, 60% of those women experienced incest. And when, you know the age it happens? Four, seven, and nine. And how long does it last in a family? In it, usually between that age up to 15 or 16, until she gets strong enough to leave, to run for her life. And what is, while this is happening, the mother knows, but cannot cope. 
and the father's doing what he's doing, and that's slave training. That needs to be detoxed. So that our children, sons or daughters, do not have to go through that grief. And then they grow up, with, they have their outfits, they have their education, but they're walking around with that sickness inside their hearts. They cannot have any healthy relationships. So we are going to have to really do our work so that we no longer have those states of being, states of consciousness. So I will close out and say I welcome you into wellness womb wellness. This overcoming an angry vagina is actually a journey into womb wellness. So that we no longer have to suffer and we no longer have to feel we don't have the power nor the knowledge to heal ourselves. I have written it here. This is a text. And if you take it, you will no longer have, you won't have to cry. You can heal. You can build. You can help yourself and you can help your mother. You can help yourself and you can help your daughter and all the women. And as you heal yourself as a woman, you'll be able to help our men to heal themselves. We thank you. For those who have any questions about whatever level of question you have, I'll, I'll take some quick Q&A. Questions. Yeah, they don't have the number itself is building. Any other questions? Listen to the question, so you might learn something from the question. This is this is called um, Ask the Queen segment. <laughs> well, the first element is Ethan, state of mind. Your mind is the first element that runs through all the other elements. These are universal forces. The next one is air, your breath, and your anatomy, your body. But there's also food, juices, and herbs that connect to the air to bring more oxygen in. Then there's the fire. The fire represents the blood in the body and the reproductive condition. So as you begin, to, if your fire is weak, you have low blood pressure. If your fire is um, weak, then you might be debilitated. If your fire is overworked, then you might be in rage. And so you have ether, air, fire, water. The water is an element where you can soothe, you can calm, you can balance yourself out through different levels of water. A vitamin is 75% liquid water and 25% mass. If you know the quality of water that we can put into our body, that may be the green water from the green juices. That may be specific herbal tonics that you would take. I have some herbal blends in the side of the book that you can take. So those healing waters, as well as taking the baths and the showers and going to the ocean and giving meditation on the water, these are ways in which you can flush and release. And then the earth, that from the plants, they come out of the earth where all the minerals and the vitamins are, and that's what helps to build us and give us stamina and power <coughs> into the elements. And next question. Well, I, I'm not sure about the cigarette ash, but I would say that the chalk is you looking for calcium. And you can get it through clay. I have a clay, I have a 21 day detox kit that is here at Nubia Natural and the Sacred Women through Apio. She's going, she's the director of the Sacred Women's Work with the Queen of Four Wellness Institute. We're just beginning to launch it here in May. Yes. So the, the beauty of this is that we're going to be able to continue when I leave. The work will continue. So I'm really not leaving. I'm really here. I may be in the United States, but I'm here. So in terms of your clay, your body wants the clay. And so you can take the clay, that's what it is, and you can put over your womb center and take out the pain. You can drink that clay. Like our elders, they will drink the clay. They will eat the clay. And they will really be eating the vitamins because all foods grow out of the mud, out of the earth. And that's why this is so important because out of how you get this lotus is in the mud. The mud is the challenges and the turmoil and all the experiences, the lessons. And as you begin to do the washing, you begin to blossom. So that's you're looking for that foundation so you begin to rebuild and heal yourself. Mm -hmm. Your body knows. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. So we like you.
like with me personally, um, when I'm on my side, I'm on my side, I've got this really bad sugar rush, really, really bad sugar rush. Mm -hmm. And I know that the sugar's not good for me, and then we have to take. Um, mm -hmm. You can take your bitters. The sugar, is what you're looking for is sweetness in your life. <laughs> so, get some papaya, some melons, get your apples, some pears, hug yourself, hug your children, give the love, write a poem, do those sweet things that your spirit wants to do, and then you won't feel that, and then you take the bitters to balance that out, to, to, to cut the craving. And I have these charts, they're pyramids, of this eight of them. And it's from the low frequency to medium frequency to the highest frequency of that food group. It's eight food groups that I laid out. So you're going to have your sweets, but if you take the sweets long enough, what will happen is it will give you bipolar, it will give you mood swings, you can get headaches, you can have skin eruptions, you can get arthritis because the sugar doesn't eat away at the bones, the joints, the brain, all of that, it deteriorates. It's, and it's, it's mo the molecular structure of sugar is very close to the molecular structure of crack. And it's a legal okay. drug. Everybody's yeah, taking it so it looks normal. Yeah. That's why it's hyping. Mm -hmm. You know, sugar overdose. Bitters. One of the bitters I have is the master herbal formula. I have the master herbal formula that helps to detox the bloodstream. When you detox the blood, detox the memory of that craving. Okay. It's called the Master Herbal Formula. I have another formula that rejuvenates the body, the tissues, the cells, the wound, the brain, the memories, the energy, and you feel it immediately. It stops you from having that uh, those cravings of just overeating, because overeating is loneliness. You want to fulfill yourself, so you're constantly putting something in your mouth. And as children, that's what we do. We start off, we're told, we always, when they cry, you give them something to eat. So as a grown woman, when you cry, you eat something. <laughs> but it really doesn't ever satisfy you, so we keep eating and looking for that peace. And it's not going to come from that food, because the food is, real food comes out of the earth. Real food comes off a tree plant. Real food comes out of the ocean. Everything outside of that is chemical in the lab food. And that is what is controlling our behavior, mm -hmm. that we have no control of ourselves. So we're not really, we really have not met up the beauty of who we really are until we get a detox, the junk food, the fast food, the processed food, the microwave food, all of that is death. And so in that, that's when we create more and more pain. And so I have, I'm gonna welcome you to all join me in a webinar. It's a 21 day detox webinar. And I will be giving the webinar in the United States, and I'll, the classes will begin. If you have a computer or if you have a big screen here, you come in and you register, and you'll be a part of the webinar training. It's a four-week training, and it's extremely affordable so that you can continue to walk the path if you need to someone to walk you. Well, me, me, I'll be walking you. And I'll be in the kitchen, I'll be saying, okay, these are the juices, these are the herbs, these are the colors. I'll just give all the information. Because every week for 90 minutes, I'm giving you a charge. I'm saying keep going. And then you're, at the end of that, I'll send you a certificate. At the beginning of that, we'll send you forms so that you can tell me what's going on with your health. And then we'll, then we'll send you a manual so you know this is exactly how I need to live my life. And you'll learn the 12 points. And so some will, will come on because of fibroid tumors and cysts. They need to get onto a holistic lifestyle. Some will come on because they're bleeding and clotting heavy. Some will come on because they keep losing their babies in the fourth and fifth month because the tumor outgrows the, the fetus. And some will come in because they have high blood pressure, diabetes, headaches, cancer, obesity. Whatever way you come on, just come on and let's take this journey together, begin to take this healing more. So we are doing a number of things to make sure that you are empowered and that you're strong. One of which I came here, this is my fourth visit. It was so deep when I got to the airport this last time, they said, um, Miss, what are you here doing? This is your fourth and short spend of time. I'm visiting family, doing what we have to do to heal our community, right? We can go through all that, but you know, that means that now it's time to pass the mantle or extend the mantle to our Frio, who has been with me since last year, but has been with me in spirit for years, studying this body of work of sacred, sacred woman, the city of wellness, and now overcoming. And so, for those who are a little nervous about saying overcoming your vagina, let me tell you about a little story. What's a little story? 
I was at a um, I was at a book signing at Nubia Natural because Nubia Natural brought, is the uh, they're the publishers of this book and they brought me in and so when myself and Ophelia we came out of the shop at ten o'clock at night there were two sisters sitting in a car and they said Queen of Fua, is that you I said yes what are you doing here in London I love those kind of questions I said well I just finished writing my book I'm, I'm doing a book signing for Overcome and point to the window with the books are overcoming and vagina. She said, What? What you say? <laughs> Everyone does that. I said, Overcoming an angry vagina. Before I can get out the journey to Womwell, well, she said, I got an angry vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a little deeper than that because her girlfriend said, Uh uh, my, my vagina is more angry than your vagina. <laughs> because we know we carry our rage in us. You know, and, so, and then when I come into some of the book signings, someone will say, I don't have no angry vagina. I don't know what she's talking about. And they're talking right behind my head. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they come out of the session, they're like, you know, I might have one in 1995. I was a little upset about something, but I never paid any attention. You know how we just keep moving, keep it moving? But there's something that keeps following us. There's something gnawing at our soul because we didn't address it. We didn't process it. We didn't get a chance to explain ourselves through it. We didn't learn from it. Because one of the ways of liberating yourself is learn from your lessons. Study, reflect, and say, why do I keep creating the same drama over and over again. And what can I do, that's all we tapped into our womb tonight, what can I do to change that and have a healthy reality? So, thank you. I think I, think I answered questions. I think I'm supposed to do some book signs right now. Mm -hmm. okay.